For this video, we're going to switch over from proving triangles congruent to proving triangles similar. Okay, so let's do a quick reminder of what it means for triangles to be similar. So we know that when we have similar triangles, all corresponding sides are proportional and all corresponding angles are congruent. So if you look at the example that I have on the screen, I've given you an isosceles triangle that has been dilated by a scale factor of one half. Okay, so that's going from big to small. Remember, if you're, if you're doing a reduction or what we call a shrink, then the scale factor is between zero and one. So these are in fact two similar figures. We know because all sides are proportional and all angles are congruent. I'm going to be introducing only one new theorem. That's it. You're not going to have to add a whole lot of information here. All right, so we're going to talk about this one new theorem. So I'm going to erase some of our information on here. I'm going to get rid of all of these side lengths. And I'm even going to get rid of one of our angle measures. So I'm going to get rid of this angle measure up here. All right, now... The information that is given to you on the screen right now is enough to prove that two triangles are congruent. You only have to know that two angles of one triangle are congruent to the two corresponding angles of the other triangle. This is the angle-angle theorem of similarity. All right. So let's talk about why this works. First thing that we know is that all the angles of a triangle add up to be 180 degrees. So if we know that two, tri or that two angles are congruent to two corresponding angles, we can assume that the other angle is congruent because they have to add up to be 180 degrees. So if I were to give these numbers, if this was 65 degrees and this was 65 degrees, this one was 65 degrees and this one was 65 degrees, even if they didn't give it to us, we would know that these two angles are congruent because they have to add up to be 180 degrees. And based on the what we learned in our angle side relationships, remember that the angles control how long the sides are. So we know that these two sides would be congruent within the triangle. These two sides would be congruent. And they would be changing in a proportion. And then the angle across from the 50 degree angle would be smaller than those two and it would change in the same proportion. So our new theorem for proving similarity is the angle-angle theorem. So let's talk about the theorems that we use to prove similarity and how they compare to the theorems that we use to prove congruence. So I've listed out our five theorems to prove congruence, and we're going to talk about how they tie in to the theorems that we use to prove similarity. So the first thing that we know is we've got a new theorem, the angle-angle theorem of similarity. Now, we're going to use some of the same theorems we use to prove congruence, we're going to use the side-side-side theorem. We're going to use the side-angle-side theorem. And we're going to use the hypotenuse-leg theorem. We are not going to use angle-angle-side or angle-side-angle -angle to prove similarity. The reason for that is that we don't need these because angle-angle takes care of both of them. In both of these theorems, they both have the AA in them. That means that in both of them you would have to know that two angles are congruent to two corresponding angles. It doesn't matter about the side because we don't even have to have that information. All we have to have is angle-angle. So we have four theorems that we use to prove similarity. So now let's look at a couple of examples of how we use these. So we're going to start off by looking at an example of side-angle-side. 
So these two triangles can be proved similar by the side angle side theorem of similarity. All right, so first things first, we have to check to see if our sides are proportional. Okay, so remember, this has to do with sides being proportional, not congruent. When we were talking about triangles being congruent, the sides had to be congruent. Now they just have to be proportional. So we're going to check our scale factor and see if it matches with all of our sides. So 6 over 3 equals 2. 4 over 2 equals 2. So we know that this side is proportional to this side. This side is proportional to this side. And we know the included angles are congruent. And that's why we can use our side angle side theorem of similarity. All right, let me draw another example. All right, it's not perfect. It's a little, I mean, a little bit bigger than what it was. All right, so let's say that this side is 4 and this side is 8. Again, I'm doing these as easy as I can. We know that this angle is congruent to this angle and we know this angle is congruent to this angle. Looking at this to prove similarity, this is all the information that we needed. We know that these two triangles are similar by the angle-angle theorem of similarity. Alright, it's not angle-angle side. We don't use angle-angle side. It's just angle-angle. All right, let's do another one. And do a one that looks a little bit different. So we'll do that. This is one, two, and three. And we know that this is three, six, and nine. Okay, so you're asked to prove if they're similar. We're given three sides. So that means we might be able to use the side, side, side theorem if and only if the sides are proportional. So let's check our sides. We know that 1 corresponds to 3, which is 1 third. We know that 2 corresponds to 6, which simplifies to be 1 third. And we know that 3 corresponds to 9, which simplifies to be 1 third. So we have a scale factor of 1 third. That means that in fact we can use the side 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 theorem. So you're going to get a series of questions to answer to check to see your understanding on these. Make sure you click as click mark as done when you're done submitting your form.